Thank you. Um, I'm Satoru Oishi from Riken, and I'm talking about the, the title of which uh, Dr. Tomita explained. And the, the role of mine is to connect it between the Iruhansan's um, hydraulics and hydrology parts to um, following Tomi, Dr. Tomita's uh, meteorological parts. And before getting into the topics, I would like to talk about my background. Uh, I'm a civil engineering um, engineer, and I, I educated as a civil engineering. And so my, my colleagues uh, has developed, uh, a con, con, uh, conducted to develop the, the Akasi straight bridge, which you can see from the coffee breaks room. And um, this is the longest um, suspended bridge all over the world. And we, we do such our work in the, our undergraduate student undergraduate course, and at that moment, our high-performance high computing is to solve the foundation to foundation mechanism of the shaking and also the shaking by the wind. However, I'm entering into the disaster prevention research field, and I started from the heavy rain uh, related to research. So from that point, I uh, my relation between the meteorology started from the, my master's era. And this is, uh, I, I picked up from my PhD dissertation, and this is the uh, cross-sectional image of uh, the crowd. This is a topography mountain, and the, it says ice crystals and hairs, and we calculate that hairs or ice crystals one by one explicitly at that moment. And yeah, at that moment, the, the dominant researcher uh, conducted the bulk uh, calculation, which is uh, the just uh, mass uh, inside the volume is calculated, but I calculated the one by one particle. And for that calculation, we need a higher performance computer. And we also use a, a supercomputer in our university, but we also have a DEC Alpha 64-bit RISC processor uh, in our laboratory. And we uh, use it for our test code testing. And so at that mo moment, the, that DEC alpha um, processes are, are very fine for meteorologists and hydrologists. And most of our society uses, even I was in, a, I, I was a postdoc in National Center for Atmospheric Research in United States, which was a very established uh, meteorological institute that they use in that deck alpha, and I tuned the the pressure solution by using deck alpha. Um, but uh, after coming back to Japan, I also uh, conducted to the risk communication research with citizens to save their lives and and their assets. So um, I would like to talk about the two issues. One is the connecting between the hydrological part to meteorological part. The other is uh, risk communication. And so the, the, the problem between the hydrology and the meteorology to risk communication is that the, the grid we call um, basically, numerical weather prediction and hydrological prediction has been conducted through the representative points, which co we call it as grids. Or uh, in, in meteorology, cell has another meaning, so we call it as grid. And so the right hand side, left hand side shows the global uh, scale, which has several layers, and each layer has many, many grids. 
and in regional, le, le, uh, regional size, uh, also we uh, cut our region grid by grid. And each grid has representing a uh, crowd, crowd. Therefore, uh, we calculate the crowd uh, grid by grid. And Dr. Yashiro in Rick and Alex talked to, the, uh, to talk to a newspaper about that point that the, in the numerical simulation, the, the crowd system is calculated by cubic uh, sense. Therefore, uh, the movement of the, the, the crowd in the air is somehow cubic. But we show it in as a, a more sophisticated uh, crowds. And it will be explained by Dr. Tomita. And we put that result into the hydrological part, which uh, Dr. Iruhan explained. We are living in a basin whose border is not artificially uh, cut. It. Uh, this is the, the figure of Kobe City. Um, we are now stated, we are now, uh, we are here. Uh, this is the Port Island. And th these are the mountainous area. And Kobe has many uh, mountainous area and many basins. The orange line shows the border of the basins and blue line shows the river systems. And as you can see from this picture, borders are not associated with the grids. Uh, it's uh, naturally decided by the topography. And in natural, the, the water entering into that basin never comes to the next the, uh, neighbor basins. It is the definition of the basin. So we have to calculate the water movement uh, in the basin. However, the, the grid system prevents us from doing it. Now, we are using the final resolution or rectangular resolution, rectangular mesh, to solve it, which I, uh, Dr. Iruhan explained already. And by using his uh, um, very sophisticated uh, scheme, uh, we can calculate the uh, lower basin inundation as well. Um, previously, uh, not previously, but nowadays, we have to calculate the movement of the water by grid by grid, like that. So by following the river basins, we have to uh, use the final resolution mesh the meteorology, meteorologist gives, then we calculate the water movements of inside the grid. And the, the mountainous area is the, also calculated by somehow the, that kinds of model. Uh, the upper part is uh, free water and the lower part is uh, ground water. And these are calculated. But um, from right now, I would like to move on to the risk communication. As Ilhan, Dr. Ilhan showed that we can, we can get that kind of uh, research results, which is a discharge we call. And the, the horizontal line shows a time series. This is September 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And the vertical line shows the discharge, which is a cubic meter per second of the movement of the water in the river. And blue line shows the river discharge capacity, which is decided by cross-section of the river. Um, this figure for experts shows that the, the very serious uh, flood will be happen because the river discharge cap capacity exceeds, uh, the, the flood forecasting exceeds the river discharge capacity. So 
peak discharge is more than safe level, much more than safe level, and overtopping banks or bank crops will be forecasted. However, people do not understand it. And experts also do not understand immediately about that situation. This photo is taken from the Hurricane Sandy, uh, devastated New York City, and the, the building of the Plaza Hotel is inundated. And from these kinds of discharge chat, cannot see, cannot show that kind of results. And also, the inundation uh, uh, cra breaks the cars, and nowadays, the, most of the vehicles are operated by electricity, and the electricity is very weak in inundation. Therefore, uh, I'm not sure these cars are hybrid or electric car, but the, most of the electric car was severely damaged by that kind of situation. But the, our calculation doesn't show it. Even in Japan, uh, these are the United States. If they get suffer from the typhoon, um, the, the water is fairly pure for us. However, in Japan, the mountain is very close to the city, and mud slides come to the city. So the mud, mud water destroyed the houses and cars as well. So not only inundated, but also uh, totally break the, the houses and the cars. This photo is taken from the, the typhoon um, uh, detected area, typhoon area in Hyogo Prefecture here, in the northern part of Hyogo. So I, I'd like to show, say that the imagination is required for understanding what will happen, even for experts. So this kind of chart is not enough. But these kinds of figure is required. Therefore, uh, we are now considering that the pre-calculation and post-calculation is as important as the simulation itself. Therefore, uh, uh, IICS already have data processing platform and to build the the city model uh, automatically. From the image of Google or image of several uh, private mapping, uh, that data processing platform automatically detects the shape and the height. Then they uh, modify it into several layers, and, and we can use it for the porosity model, which Ilhansen explained, and also we can use it for the earthquake shaking model as well. This kind of uh, data processing platform gives uh, semantics, which helps to associate data with troubles. And also it can be used for the post-processing um, This is the, the tsunami uh, assumption in Kobe city. Uh, this is a Kobe tower you can see from the window. And the, the tsunami is um, in, introduced into the city area when it happens within one and 53 minutes. So however, this figure is not perfect because we cannot say, we didn't say about the devastated uh, results of the tsunami, like photograph. So we are now trying to do that. And, but uh, at least we can understand easily to 
get uh, suffer from the tsunami by using. Oh, I'm sorry, it is. Uh, by using this kind of figure. And data processing platform for post processing can make that kind of uh, uh, visualization very easy. Catastrophic disaster is difficult to imagine. So this uh, is the, the fourth movie that I took from helicopter after the um, uh, Chuetsu earthquake happened. And yeah, I'm, I'm a, a kind of disaster prevention person and I can have a chance to, I could have a chance to uh, take that movie. And that disaster, even earthquake, uh, most of the slopes are collapsed because of the shaking in that point. And it is very difficult to for imagine to, to that kind of disaster before it happens. However, uh, uh, our calculation using the FDPS, which is basically developed for ast astronomy by Dr. Makino, and we can calculate that kind of collapse uh, inside the, the supercomputer as well. So after, this is very uh, uh, recent result and I didn't uh, change it into the visualization, but uh, we can do it. So I would like to summarize. So heavy rain and slope failure is very common and sediment runoff and river bed increase and flood risk can be imagined. Somehow it is very difficult, an uh, earthquake and slope failure. And after the slope failure because of the earthquake, weaker rain uh, gives a sediment runoff and it increases river bed increase or it uh, causes the avalanche, then flood risk will be increased. Our experience knows that deforestation also causes a slope failure because the, the 50, 70 years ago, the most of the Kobe City's mountain was somehow no tree because of the energy at that moment was taken from the wood from the mountain. Therefore, uh, the Kobe mountain was deforestated and that moment, we had many slope failure, history says. We are not sure about the climate makes that kind of deforestation because the climate gives impact all, all over the forest, all, all single trees simultaneously. And single trees are reacted uh, simultaneously. Therefore, uh, so this is the second last one. Uh, no, nowadays, we are using the fragility curve to imagine what's happening uh, from the hazard to disaster. But we also would like to explicitly calculate what does happen to us. And by using that kind of explicitly calculation prevent us from the exceeding assumptions. Then we can calculate the damage uh, clearly. So this is our strategy to use the post-K computer to direct simulation of what does happen to us. Uh, this is the end of my talk, and thank you for your kind attention, and I'm sorry. Thank you very much.